Hi, good morning everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop. And as part of our Sunday evening blog, we thought we would give everybody a real quick tutorial, or as quick as I can make it, uh, on the different router profiles uh, that we can do within our equipment itself. Now, we designed a project right off the top of my head last night that's going to be really quick, I think. Uh, it's going to fit on any size table, right down to the guys with, say, the smaller bench top stuffs. So it doesn't matter what size piece of equipment you have for this tutorial. Okay, we're going to go into vCarve Pro because that is the software that we're using. We're going to create a new file and I'm going to go with the job size of 12 wide by 14 high. We've decided to create an 8 by 10 picture frame and we're going to walk you through the steps. We're using 3 quarter inch material. I always start off the top of my uh, the top of my material touching my bit from my z-axis on the top and my XY datum position is always in the middle. Our unit of measurements is inches in the United States. We click OK. All right, I'm going to open up the tool pass tab as well. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to create vectors. We're going to draw a rectangle. All right, I'm going to draw this rectangle. And I'm going to make this exactly 8.0 on my width and 10.0 on my height I am going to click apply. I'm going to come in here uh, to transform objects we're going to align selected objects and I am going to get him dead center. Now there's also a reason as to why we're programming in the center of the material because this is going to be a two-sided engraving. Alright so please bear with me for a moment. We're going to highlight him while we are in while we are in selection mode under edit objects I will come up here I will right click I will copy I will right click and I will paste this could also be done by using an offset but this is again this is just one way of doing something now we're going to include a rabbit on the interior of this now if we want I'll show you a, a quick image of a rabbit here is a rabbit this is what we're going to use on the interior of our frame this is where your glass would sit down in and then your picture would go on top and you generally have like a little uh, cardboard or, or some type of backer and you use push points. I'm old school and this is how I used to build picture frames years ago. Alright, let's close him out. What we're going to do is we need to create that lip. Now we know the overall picture dimension is exactly 8 by 10 but I am going to come down into transform objects and we're going to set this interior rabbit size. Now depending on what you want to put around this is how much we're going to reduce. I think a quarter inch lip all the way around is enough for your glass or your wh whatever it is you're going to use plexiglass or maybe a, a double pane glass whatever is going to sit down in. So if we want to remove a quarter of an inch we're going to go 7.5 that'll give us a quarter of an inch. Don't forget to unlink your X and Y and this will be a 9.5 I will click apply this now gives me everything I need for my glass now you can make this 3 8 if you wanted but for the sake of the example we're just going to use a quarter of an inch alright next thing I'm gonna do is I realize that I'm also going to highlight this one while I'm in edit object selection mode I'm going to highlight them again. We're going to right click. I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click. I'm going to paste. We have a solid line going. I am going to come down to transform objects, set selected object size. And if I want an inch all the way around, I've got to add two to my width. That'll give me 10.0. And if I want an inch around here and add an inch to the top and bottom, it's 12.0. We click apply. All right, now, this is why I told you I always start my datum from the middle. Now, I'm going to take, and the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create, with an end mill, that rabbit. We're going to create, and we're going to go in half the thickness of the, uh, we're going to go in half the thickness of the material we've chosen, which is three quarters of an inch. I will click calculate. Let's reset, and let's preview our toolpath. 
And let's set that color to black. I think it'll show up just a little bit better. Alrighty. Let's close him out. Let's go back here. Now, what I want to do, and this is going to be the back side of the frame, I told you. We're going to come in, we're going to highlight this. I am going to come up to a toolpath operation of a profile toolpath. I want to cut all the way through my material. Now, I am showing advanced toolpath options because I need to put tabs on this. We need to add tabs here. I also need to cut the inside. If I cut the outside, I'm going to cut my rabbit out that we just put in. So let's move that to the inside. We're going to come in. We're going to edit our tabs. I'll add eight of them. So let's add tabs. I will also take and shift these around. I hate having my tabs in the corners. If you don't deem the eight are enough, we can come down and you can just highlight, uh, not highlight, but you can just align where your, uh, your little addition sign goes here and we can pop in another one. Same thing over here. Pop in another one. We're going to close this out. We're going to call this uh, inner cutout and we're going to hit calculate. Yes, we know we're going to cut through the material. Okay. Let's reset and preview all tool paths again. Alrighty. Alright, let's take and let's take a peek at our, uh, our tool pass thus far. Okay, there's our rabbit and there's our cutout. This again is the back side of this. Now, what I would do is on my machine, and for those of you who have been with me a while, you know that I run a stop, a three quarter by three quarter inch stop on my X and Y axis of my spoiler board. I run one across my X and I run one down the side. So essentially what I would do is once I have done these two operations here, I would flip this over as simple as that and then I'd move on to what's next. Now what is next is the fact that on this outer border here, we now want to put in a nice cove. For me to do that cove, I'm going to close out. I'm going to come up to my profile toolpath. I can uncheck show advanced toolpath options. I will go to a new selection tool and I'm looking at a form tool. I am going to use, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to use a one inch round nose my cut depth, my step overs, my feeds and speeds are dedicated to my machine so that is what it is you will have to go in and readjust to what better suits your piece of equipment uh, for you. We will click OK. Now I want to be on the outside of this. I do not want to encroach in because then I'm going to lose that one inch uh, around my frame itself. So We'll put in uh, C-O-V-E. We're going to go in half the material thickness of 375 thousandths. We have our tool in. We're going to click Calculate. Let's reset our preview again, and we're going to look at all tool paths. Now, again, this is after we have flipped the material. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up in here and now I want to cut this out but I do want to leave the cove. Again we have flipped the material. I am going to come into a profile toolpath because now at this point we're going to swap out the forming tool and we're going to go back so that we can cut this out with a quarter inch end mill with all the pertinent information uh, that I know will work on my piece of equipment. We click OK. What I want to do is I want to show my advanced toolpath functions and we need to cut this out so I am going to go to 760 thousandths which will be 10 thousandths over the material thickness that's in there. The bit is on the outside right and we want to do the offset to match the depth 
of that, uh, that forming tool, that round nose, to make the cove. So I'm going to enter that same information, which was 375 thousandths. I need to add tabs to this. Let's edit those tabs. We'll put in eight. All right, we've got our tabs approximately where we want them. Like I said, feel free to add more if, if you deem necessary. Great, we're going to close and then we're going to hit calculate. We know that we're going to go through the material because we've set our cut depth for 10 thousandths more. All right, let's reset and look at our tool pass one last time. Again, we've put the need to need to flip this over but again that's why I use stops here's our internal here's our rabbit let's angle this you can see this beautiful little shelf cut half the depth of the material this is where our glass would sit we would flip this over honestly I'd have my corners locked in to my stops and that way there I could achieve this profile. Now if we look, there is our beautiful little cove profile right there. The same thing would be done if you wanted to do this really quick with, let's say you want to put a chamfer around. Well all we're going to do is we're going to come in here. I am going to replace this tool. Well, let's look at a 90 degree V-bit. Now we're going to come down and we're going to use this tool for our edge instead. Same thing's going to apply. I'm going to put it to the outside. I will go 250 thousandths deep. I will click uh, right here and we will go we'll go chamfer. We're going to calculate it. Let's reset our preview. Preview all our tool paths again. Our rabbit and our cutout is in. Now we've just gone around and we've run this. However, we do need to go back in and we need to make the adjustment for the cutout with the end mill because, as you can see, 375 thousandths off the edge of the chamfer leaves an extra eighth of an inch of material, which we do not want. So let's come back into our profile. We have our cut depth, we have our advanced toolpath function cut. We are outside and we need to offset this. Now, instead of 375 thousandths, we need to offset it 250 thousandths. We hit calculate. Let's click OK. Let's reset these previews. And then as we can see, we have a very, very nice bevel put around this outer edge with the cutout being right at the bottom of our V-bit, all right? Well, I hope this helped everybody. And when it comes down to, uh, when it comes down to your decorative edges, I told you there are things you can manipulate, things you can't. Uh, and there are certain things that if I ever needed molding run, I'm clearly not going to do it on my piece of equipment because I'm limited to a four-foot bed. Most molding we buy is in eight foot lengths. Now, if you have a full size machine, absolutely. But for me, I'm going to go down to the mill yard and I am going to pick up and purchase my, uh, my molding or anything like that from a place such as that, okay? All right, everybody, I hope this helped. As always, I appreciate you all to no end and uh, enjoy the rest of your week. It's a short one, and we'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout out.